TG Mart has specific approaches on how to approach different type of questions. Since I started the verbal course, there uh, I learned about the meaning based approach, how to read the meaning of sentence correction questions before going to the options. So don't understand the meaning of what the writer is saying in the question. You are most probably won't la- uh, land on the correct answer, and then there was free thinking. When you are solving those CR, those RC questions, you need to think from an author's perspective what the author is. Uh, so just to try take that would actually sum up your dream. Experience is uh, something that makes you ace of the game. It's a very proud moment to see when a student is actually talking about everything that you actually talked about in the entire journey. Welcome to another debrief session of the EG Mat, and today we welcome Abdul Vesi, and he's a very special guest of ours and a rock star student of EG Mat. So to introduce him, he has got a 99th percentile. So basically, he's one of the top one percent of all the test takers in the GMAT with a score of 770, with a perfect Q51, and not just that, with a 99th percentile score in verbal as well. and that's a v45 in verbal we welcome you abdul to and we thank you for taking out time uh, to share your journey with all of us thank you so much akash it's been a pleasure working with you for like quite few months you have been that pillar that supported my entire journey uh, right yeah. from where i started to the points where i failed and now uh-huh. this right and guys so to introduce him okay uh he's just amongst one of us only okay he has done a btech uh okay and along with that he has more than 7 years of work experience in the product management field and currently he's working with the hcl software company as a senior manager in the product management field uh am, is that correct yes uh, yeah and uh, he's like not just a scholar as well but he is a very professional worker as well if i'm not wrong he has got one of the fastest promotions in his organizations and his growth is unparalleled to anyone yeah yeah man means uh, uh when it comes to work so yeah i can say i am quite a dedicated worker because uh, getting into product management with just a btech uh-huh. degree at that point was itself in a journey of its own so right. yeah so from that point i had to be the hardest worker in the room to get to where i am so obviously yeah but uh, with that always comes the support of the mentors so with mm-hmm. the support of those mentors it has been possible that today uh, i am where i am right you know that's a phenomenal journey that you have had and i'm pleased i'm just glad to be a part of it actually to be a small part of it but let's get right into your journey right it's been not a very small journey it's been yeah. a journey of ups and downs yeah, okay. yeah. mostly downs as per you and uh, like finally then getting the maximum high right yeah. so yeah. let's get right into your journey so when was the first time you thought about it and how did you join us and all telling you frankly uh-huh. uh, means even before i got into graduation okay. i had in mind that i have to do an mba from the top 3 or 4 b schools that uh, i mentioned to you earlier mm-hmm. right so i had always that said goal in my mind but um, as you know you move around the educational journey then you go into the work life you got diverted from those goals or there are multiple you know um, multiple commitments that you have but uh, even after that once i got settled into my career so i started preparing for cat i scored really well in cat means i mentored even few of his, uh, few of my friends a uh, few of my family members mm-hmm. and uh, proudly i can say today that they have graduated from like top 5 top 10 b schools in india but yeah. uh, to my luck i never got the colleges even during that point of time uh, the colleges that i wanted so okay. i yeah so i continued on my journey i uh, so uh, i started studying at around 2017 2018 uh, i studied for 2 3 years and uh, then after all of this happened i stopped mm-hmm. uh, it was 
so i had to take a break okay and then uh, after that this covid came there were multiple you know uh, multiple downfalls happening in my journey as well means i got uh, you know very critical disease i was uh, which actually impacted my life i don't i didn't know that i'll live for a year or two or will i recover so uh, uh, but at that point also means uh, perseverance is something that pushed me forward so uh, once my health got a bit better i started studying for gmat uh, since i prepared for cat earlier my concepts in quant were pretty much good but uh, means i i was always an avid reader so right. even for that part i thought that my verbal was good but once i Uh, went to the stage of writing GMAT. So obviously, uh, GMAT official mocks are much easier than the actual exam. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was getting good scores there. I was pretty much confident. I studied everything possibly that I could have, yeah. and then I went to take the real GMAT exam. And then the uh, I had a shocker. It was seven uh, ten. now 710 is not gonna land me in any b school that i you know that i most heartily desired mm-hmm. so uh i just and at that point also means uh, at that point my medical condition went real bad mm-hmm. and there were other turbulences in my personal journey so i had to take a break for few months i just stopped everything means i was not in a condition to pursue anything further okay. i took a break and then i means i was uh, set on the goal that i have to do it if not today then tomorrow okay as soon as my health got better i i had uh, means i had uh, uh, con- i i know that e gmat was the best choice that can help me achieve my goal so mm-hmm. i previously gave some sigma x i know that this is something that is actually going to reflect what a- on actual gmat it is right yeah. so i enrolled in each gmat i gave the first mock thankfully the mock score was good but even then it was not what i desired then that's the moment that i connected with you and i re- still remember the first statement you gave you gave me that even though it's good but this is not to your full potential your potential lies way beyond okay i started preparing i was giving official gmat mocks i was giving sigma x so in sigma x my score ranged between initially it was 740 740 750 then i had a downfall where it was 720 710 also mm-hmm. and uh, i gave uh, and surprisingly in the official gmat exams it was uh, 760 750 770 that 20 point range nothing apart from that so i went and i gave the paper and i was disappointed uh, means i know 720 is a very good score very very good score but uh, i was disappointed i got a q51 then i got 36 in verbal the lowest score that i ever had in any mock i ever gave right although in i had a score basically yeah it yeah it was in ir it was 8 in aw it was 6 all other sections it was full but verbal yeah. gave me um, 720 yeah. okay so that was my first attempt then uh, at that point i was pretty much confident that uh, yeah. luck played a role uh that maybe that was not a good day so mm-hmm. i started preparing again so it was a 15 day journey i started giving mocks i started uh, solving advanced level questions i uh, means akash gave me some good videos uh you know, through which i was able to find where the conceptual uh, conceptual gaps were and i gone through all of that and akash helped me uh Uh, so uh, he told me one thing before giving the exams even in the first attempt that for verbal before going to exam solve at least 10 questions so you will be in the mindset of solving questions but uh, you know you can call it adrenaline rush or you can call it excitement i forgot it that day i went straight away into the paper and 
after that i don't know what happened but i kept that in mind for the second time but uh, uh you know uh, luck has uh, luck or you can say fate has something else planned mm-hmm. for me um uh, at that point i have means i uh, what to say uh, at that point um, mm-hmm. i uh, anxiety took the better of me i can say anxiety took the better of me again i scored a quant 51 ir8 aws6 although verbal score increased but just by two points uh, it was verbal 38 and the overall sc- uh, score increased by just 10 pointers it was 730 again it was not the score that could get me into one of my dream schools and that was the point because if you see my journey through the years it has been failures 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 downfalls in um, in studies in competitive studies right professionally i was growing continuously professionally i was excelling yeah. but this was one part where things were going on this way so even i i may be thought i thought that maybe this is something not for me let's start uh, preparing for applications and uh, maybe i can get into any one or um, i can means have a chance of getting an interview from any one of the b schools in my shortlist mm-hmm. but yeah, the probability was very very low because coming from a, not from an iit or iim or nit coming from a normal engineering background right the chances were pretty much low and so uh at that point i talked uh, to akash and he even then his statement was the same this is uh, this was not your potential your potential lies well beyond even 750 you have a potential to get 760 or 770 just the conditions need to be right and your mindset needs to be right mm-hmm. so i mm-hmm. booked the slot for my third and the final attempt it was do or die means uh, if i would get i mean i was in the mindset that if i get even a 710 700 i'll cancel the score if i get 740 750 i'll accept it but after that i am not going to give gmat ever again so but uh, this time fate, uh, fate played in my favor and i shouldn't say this but uh, what happened was i actually became uh, my health condition reemerged and i was unable to study so for the third attempt i didn't study even a bit i didn't open open a single notebook or a single notes uh, i just uh, in, i was just relaxing over these 15 20 day time period yeah. and uh, uh, when it came to the exam day i just remembered what akash told me solve 10 questions go to the exam i solved 10 questions take the headache medications and i went to solve the exam uh quant uh, was surprisingly very tough so quant hmm. was surprisingly very tough means the toughest quant i have seen in any mock uh, or anywhere for gmat okay but uh, i was confident in quant because that's what i have been doing for years so i took my time and i solved the quant i was unsure that maybe i could land in the 50 zone after two successive 50 ones but i solved it to the best of potential and i didn't let it impact my verbal so mm-hmm. i just thought that okay if it's 50 also fine because i already have a safe score not with uh, which there is a maximum probability in my schools but with which i can apply to so yeah. uh yeah so i just left uh, anything i was not thinking anything about quant i went on to verbal as soon <clears throat> there was also one thing in verbal that uh, akash uh, pointed out in my mocks i was surprisingly taking too much time on some of the questions and what was happening when i was taking too much time those were the only questions that i was doing wrong otherwise all the other questions that i was solving was perfectly correct so in any mock where i took longer time uh, my scores fluctuated but when i just went with my gut feeling everything went well so i started giving verbal 
I have this thing very clear in mind that I haven't studied for this attempt. Yeah. I think it's going to be plus or it's going to be minus, but it's not going to be some major impact. So there was no anxiety, no tension of results. I was giving the exam in free spirit. I was literally enjoying the paper this time. Okay. As question by question went by, I was thinking of every single concept that I have. Uh, means as I was solving the question, I was literally seeing yeah. the errors in the question that what the errors are or what the author is trying to say. I was literally seeing that because at this point of time, I had almost little to no anxiety. I was not in fear of uh, what the result might be. I was just solving the exam based on my knowledge and my gut feeling what i had gathered over this time period and uh, one by one one by one as the questions uh, passed so uh, things were coming in my mind that uh, what the results might be but i reassured mm -hmm. myself that let it be solve mm -hmm. it to your best enjoy the paper yeah. As soon as the paper ended, I hit on enter and I had the shock. <laughs> I was not expecting the score. I was expecting maybe 750. Uh -huh. It might be 740 also. Seeing the trend 720, 730, it might uh -huh. be 740 or even below. So, but uh, the shock, I got surprisingly 45 in verbal and overall a score of 770 with a perfect in IR as well. And uh, that's the story of me getting from 710 to 770. Uh, the only thing that kept me going was the belief in self and perseverance means not losing hope, giving it the final try. So eventually things went well. So I'm saying this, that the perseverance paid uh, the results. But yeah, um, it was all due to perseverance that I eventually came to that 770. Otherwise, I would have lost hope uh, after 730 only, which I almost did. Yeah. No, that's I know fine. I speak a lot. No, 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 definitely. no, no it was such a fabulous journey to uh, be a part of, actually. And that's actually the mantra of success, right? It happens with the best of the best as well. If I take maybe an example of like maybe Virat Kohli, okay, he was not succeeding at all or performing at his potential from the yeah. past maybe three years approximately as soon as he took a break for you it was a forceful break okay but as soon as he took a break he started enjoying his cricket back again he st he removed the pressure of performance actually once he did that he he starts he started yeah. succeeding actually in all of his matches and that's what actually happened with you as well once you actually removed the fear okay the of performance that actually got removed by your health condition ultimately okay but once it got removed you just performed at your ultimate level because you already had that inner ability with the yeah right so you just needed a little kind of a break that really helped you a lot yeah so just to give uh everyone a perspective right like you started off when you came to us you start you were already very good in court okay quant has already been a forte of yours but verbal was something where we needed the maximum improvement right and i always knew after talking with you that you always have the potential we just need to channelize as we just said so uh, just let us talk through about a little bit about your verbal improvement journey from v36 and how did you reach to the top one percent in verbal actually so how did what approaches you changed in verbal so earlier uh means um I was an avid reader from the time of CAT, but only reading isn't going to take you anywhere, right? When it comes to GMAT. So G, G, uh, EGMAT has specific approaches on how to approach different type of questions. So I had been earlier reading a lot of material. You can name any book in the market, any good book that is for GMAT verbal and I had read it. But even then, my verbal score was not improving after a point. I was getting 36, 38, maybe on a good day, 40, but not beyond that. So um, once I started the verbal course there, uh, I learned about the meaning based approach, how to read the meaning of sentence correction questions before going to the options. So a lot of students, what the mistake they do is they directly uh, see the pattern in answers to two, two, one, three, one, one, right? They start solving those questions. But the problem is 
if you don't understand the meaning of what the writer is saying in the question, you are most probably won't la uh, land on the correct answer. And that chance increases if you are doing well in the paper and the questions are of medium hard or hard difficulty level. So that meaning based approach was one thing that uh, changed my trajectory in verbal. Then there was pre thinking when you are solving those CR, those RC questions, you need to think from an author's perspective, what the author is trying to tell, what story the author is trying to convey, what when you do that, then there will be a pre thinking that you will have in mind that, okay, <clears throat> in case of assumptions, this is actually what the author had the assumption in his mind. What are the different assumptions? What weaknesses can this argument has? So that pre-thinking approach is very, very important when you are solving CR and RC questions, right? So there were multiple such approaches that um, I learned from EG Matt. And once I learned them, my score started improving gradually. So uh, I tried applying those concepts into the mocks, into the questions I was solving on GMAT club and I was solving on Scholarium, right? So I was seeing that there, there was a pattern of mistakes mm -hmm. that I usually do, right? right? I identified that pattern and that is where the importance of error log also came in, right? Yeah. So we maintain an error log wherein I see, I can see that what is the pattern of mistakes that I am doing. Mm -hmm. And once I know that, then I, I can work on my weaker areas, right? right. And so GMAT can throw you anything on that day, but to be best prepared, this is a, this is a good approach to follow. <laughs> Sorry. So once I did that, uh, my score started improving gradually. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we talked about earlier, so on the day of exams, anxiety took the better out of me, but in mocks, I was scoring good. So once I learned these approaches in this attempt, I tried applying all my learnings that I have done over a period of months. Everything EG Matt taught me, everything I myself learned over a few years of my mm -hmm. study, right? I applied all of that into the paper. And surprisingly, it's, it wasn't a surprise, so basically. But yeah, for that day, seeing it was a surprise. But eventually, I realized that over over a period of time i had built those concepts into my mind that this is something you need to be careful of and that day things i was literally seeing the right answers in the exam so that is how i was able to improve my verbal from 36 to 45 believe me the approaches that are being taught in eg mat is if you follow them religiously from the heart, if you focus on maintaining your error log, you give your mocks, you maintain all these pointers. Mm -hmm. It's it doesn't matter if you are going if you are starting from a from a base level or you are starting from a medium or an expert level. It's gonna improve your score. Right. There is a methodology in EG Mat uh, called Pace, wherein even if you are a uh, medium level or an expert it automatically evaluates your skills and uh, it tells you that this these are the concepts that you have to read uh, yeah. that you need to gain your control on right so the, right. there are multiple uh, parameters through which eg mat evaluates your potential and it uh, you know it runs uh, along the track with you to get you to that dream score yeah. and uh, means yeah, that was uh, my journey and Akash has been a part of it since day one. We've been constantly talking around my mock performance, around my anxieties, everything. So, yeah. Yeah, no, being a mentor actually, and it's actually a very proud moment to see when a student is actually talking about everything that you actually talked about in the entire journey. So it's actually the proudest moment actually so uh now talking about your verbal okay the major thing that you were facing an issue in verbal okay was the initial block of questions the, in the first set of 10 questions yeah. yeah okay because of the lack of warm-up okay and because of anxiety right and it was actually taking a toll wherein in the first 10 question itself we were getting about four five incorrect and then everything went 
absolutely smoothly. Yeah, I mean, it's last the yeah. second attempt that I gave almost all the other three quarters, it was perfect. I think yes. there were only mistakes in the first one. Yes, and that only derailed the entire performance because all yeah. we know that the first block of questions are so much important in order to build up the level of difficulty of the questions and to get to the harder level questions yeah. to get to that higher score. But I'm glad that you overcame that anxiety. Okay, in the end, and we got to that top 1% in verbal. Right. Perfect. So now let's quickly move on to our next segment. That is the rapid fire segment, wherein I'll be throwing some rapid questions at you and you will be giving me back some rapid answers, which you always give. Right. So let's quickly get on with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first question for you would be is that if you could have one GMAT superpower, for example, like maybe solving all the DS questions very quickly, what would that be? It will be the timer. Okay. So right now the timer we get is, you know, we don't get an idea of how much time we are spending on any question. Okay. If I can get that, then absolutely that's a game changer. <laughs> I know how much time I'm spending on questions that uh, uh, completely changes the strategy. But yeah, that is too good to have. Yeah, perfect. One song that kept you motivated for the entire uh, journey. So... Uh, I am not able to remember the song, but there was a nightingale that was constantly blabbering into my ears that you have to do it somehow or okay. you're going to face the consequences. Okay. So that was something that motivated me to keep going. Uh, if I think of a song, then um, there is a very good uh, song in Hindi, Kar Har Maidan Fateh, okay. right? Okay. So that is something that is always at the back of my mind. Okay. And that uh, I can say that there were multiple factors that helped me keep going on. So, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Any funny or quirky moment you had in a GMAT journey, which always brings a piece of smile on your face? Believe me, there was none. <laughs> Believe me, there was none. <laughs> There were, failures, the there, there were failures, there were moments of depression, there uh, were moments where I lost faith in myself. But eventually, after overcoming all of them, that is when you get to the goal. But believe me, during this journey, there was no moment, no such moment. But I could actually think of one that now that you have overcome everything, okay, yeah. now that you look at your entire journey, you yeah. would be actually saying that why did, why was I getting anxious at such yes, a time? Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Yeah. That should always like now bring a smile that you have actually overcome and now got to know that how to overcome yeah. your anxiety. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so just a take that would actually sum up your GMAT journey. Perseverance is uh, something that makes you mm -hmm. ace of the game. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And the last question would be, if you could rewind time and give your past self one piece of advice, what would that be? It's pretty simple, man. <laughs> Never be anxious. Yeah. Your score is going to decide your worth. You may be a 710, you may be a 650, or you may be a 750. Mm -hmm. If you uh, persevere through it, if you... Keep, keep being focused on your goals, mm -hmm. then maybe not today. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. you're surely going to achieve it. Perfect. That's actually a great note to end the interview at. And we thank you so much, uh, Abdul, for taking out this valuable time of yours to share your entire journey with all of us. And we wish you all the very best from the entire EGMAS family. Okay, and we am, I'm sure that whatever you will be choosing in your life and wherever you will be going for your higher studies, you will be excelling over there and beyond that as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Akash. It has been an absolute pleasure working with the EG Mart and more specifically with you. Uh, thank you so much for helping me out from a 710 to 720 to 730 to finally a 770 score. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much.